Under laboratory diagnosis of bacteria, we have various methods in order to diagnose bacteria such as microscopy, culture, biochemical test, serological test, molecular technique and phase typing. So in the previous video, we saw the various types of culture medium that can be provided to you in your microbiology practicals. In this video, we are going to look at the various biochemical tests that can be provided to you in, bio, in microbiological practicals. All right. So first, what exactly is biochemical test? In biochemical test, you have a reagent. To this reagent, bacteria is inoculated. This bacteria it may or may not produce usually a certain type of enzyme. If the bacteria produces the enzyme, the enzyme is able to metabolize the reagent and produce byproducts. The production of byproducts is absorbed in the form of a certain change that occurs in the reagent. Either it can be a change in color or it can be in the form of effervescence either way you observe the change that occurs in the reagent and if change is observed that means the bacteria shows positive test but if the change is not observed that means the bacteria shows negative test now let's look at the various biochemical tests the first one that we have here is catalase test in catalase test you take a slide and on this slide you put reagent the reagent used is hydrogen peroxide you inoculate a bacteria into the reagent. If the bacteria, I repeat, if the bacteria produces catalase enzyme, it is able to metabolize this reagent and break it down into water and oxygen. The production of oxygen is visible in the form of air bubbles or effervescence. So air bubbles or effervescence is seen bacteria shows positive catalase test that is bacteria produces catalase enzyme if air bubbles or effervescence is not seen then bacteria is negative catalase test that is bacteria does not produce catalase enzyme this test is used to differentiate between staphylococcus species which is catalase positive that is it produces oxygen bubbles when inoculated in hydrogen peroxide and streptococcus species which is catalase negative that is it does not produce oxygen bubbles when inoculated in hydrogen peroxide reagent okay second is coagulase test in coagulase test the reagent used is plasma fibrinogen which can be done this test can be done either on a slide or in test tube so you have plasma fibrinogen, plasma fibrinogen. To this reagent, bacteria is inoculated. If the bacteria produces coagulase enzyme, then plasma fibrinogen is converted to fibrin. This fibrin is visible either in the form of clumps on slide or clot in a tube. So this test is used to differentiate between coagulase positive that is it is used to differentiate between staphylococcus aureus which shows coagulase positive test with the formation of fibrin absorbed in the form of clumps and clot and the rest of the species of staphylococcus which is coagulase negative does not produce coagulase enzyme and does not lead to the formation of fibrin so no clot formation and no clump no clump formation and no clot formation is visible next is oxidase test here oxidase reagent is used which is colorless you can see right here we have an oxidase disc which is colorless the oxidase reagent contains the following reagent to this reagent we inoculate bacteria if this bacteria produces oxidase enzyme then the oxidase reagent produces endophenol which is observed in the form of blue color so you can see right here here's oxidase negative there is no formation of purple color no production of endophenol because the bacteria does not produce oxidase enzyme here 
purple coloration is seen due to the production of endophenol because the bacteria produces oxidase enzyme. Next, citrate utilization test. In citrate utilization test, as a reagent, we take an agar slant. This agar slant is named Simon's citrate agar slant because this agar slant contains the reagent sodium citrate. The sodium citrate is at a pH of 6.8, that is a neutral pH. This sodium citrate agar slant is given to you along with an indicator. The indicator is bromothymol blue. Now, what's the significance of this indicator? The significance of this indicator is to bring change in its color whenever a certain reagent gets converted to its byproduct by the action of enzyme produces, produced by the bacteria. So in this case, bromothymol blue is green in color at a neutral pH. So here there's neutral pH. So the color of the agar slant is deep forest green. However, as soon as the pH increases and the medium becomes alkaline, the bromothymol blue becomes blue in color. So here's the Simon citrate agar slant containing sodium citrate at a neutral pH with a deep forest green color. You inoculate certain bacteria into it. If this bacteria is able to utilize the sodium citrate and convert it into carbonate and bicarbonate, then the pH increases more than 7.6 and the pH becomes alkaline. And I said earlier, bromothymol blue at an alkaline pH gives blue coloration. So what can you see here? You can see Prussian blue coloration of the medium or the agar slant. So you have citrate positive bacteria that converts the green color of the agar slant into blue color and citrate negative bacteria that is unable to convert the green color of the agar slant into blue color. Okay, next test is urease test. In urease test, you have an agar slant. This agar slant contains urea at a pH of 6.8, which is a neutral pH. The indicator used is phenol red. In citrate utilization test, the indicator used was bromothymol blue and the reagent was sodium citrate. It was initially green in color. When citrate positive test was seen, the green color got converted to blue color. In urease test, the reagent is urea and the indicator used is phenol red. The urea is at a neutral pH and phenol red at a neutral pH gives orange color. That's why you can see orange color right here. But as soon as the pH becomes alkaline, the urea, sorry, the phenol red, the indicator turns pink in color. So right now it's orange in color. We inoculate bacteria into this agar slant. If this bacteria produces urease enzyme, then it is able to utilize urea and to break it down into ammonia and carbon dioxide. As soon as urea gets broken down into ammonia and carbon dioxide, the pH becomes alkaline. And again, what does this slant contain? It contains the indicator phenol red. What happens when the pH becomes alkaline? Phenol red turns pink in color. So pink coloration of agar, agar slant comes. So you get pink coloration. Since bacteria is able to produce urease and convert orange color to pink color, this bacteria shows urease positive test. So we have urease positive bacteria that is able to convert the orange color of the agar slant into pink color. And we have urease negative bacteria that is unable to convert the orange color to pink color. Okay, next you have hydrogen sulfide production test. Here the reagent used is iron salt. It can be ferrous, sometimes ferric as well. So the bacteria, if it is able to produce hydrogen sulfide gas, then this salt gets converted to its sulfide, which is present in the form of black coloration. You can see right here, since no hydrogen sulfide gas is produced, no black coloration is seen here. Here, since hydrogen sulfide gas is produced, black coloration is seen here. So you have hydrogen sulfide positive bacteria that produces hydrogen sulfide and brings about black coloration of the reagent. 
and you have hydrogen sulfide negative bacteria that does not produce hydrogen sulfide and does not bring about the black coloration of the reagent. Next is indole ring test. In indole ring test, the reagent is tryptophan. The bacteria is inoculated into this reagent. If the bacteria produces tryptophanase enzyme, then tryptophan gets converted to indole. Addition of COVAX reagent to this indole will lead to the formation of a red ring. So you can see right here, there is red ring formation. That's because the bacteria produced tryptophanase enzyme. So it is indole positive. Here, no red ring is pr present. That means the bacteria did not produce tryptophanase. That is why red ring was not formed. This is indole negative. This test is used for indole positive bacteria that gives red ring by the production of tryptophanase and indole negative bacteria that does not give red ring due because they do not produce tryptophanase. Next is motility test. Okay. For motility test, unlike the rest of the test, we use a much thinner medium. Usually medium they contain about 1.5% of agar. However, for motility test, we use medium with only 0.5% of agar to make the medium thinner. Why? In order to allow for the motility of the bacteria. In this test, instead of inocu simply inoculating the bacteria, we stab the culture medium. So here's the culture medium. We stab the culture medium and inoculate in that way by stabbing the culture medium. Okay, so you have motility positive bacteria that shows motility and gets diffused in the medium and shows cloudy growth in the medium diffused all the way. And you have motility negative bacteria that has its growth confined along the line that it was stabbed. So it is confined to stab line. So it shows growth within this much area only. So this is motility negative and this is motility positive. Now what we can do is we can combine hydrogen sulfide production test, indole ring test and motility test for a special type of test which is called sulfide indole motility or SIM test. So looking at these three specimen, I want you to answer the following question. So there's specimen A, specimen B and specimen C. Look at specimen A and tell me whether it is sulfide positive or negative, indole positive or negative, motility positive or negative. And also give me the example of bacteria that ends up giving such a result. So comment down below the correct answer to specimen A, specimen B, and specimen C.